Uh, good morning, students. Yesterday, uh, I was seen about the hygiene and personal records, um, drug location, and, uh, that means drug industry location, design, construction, and uh, so on. In the construction and design and all, we have seen even floor, walls, and what could be the finishing of the walls, what could be the finishing of the floors, and ceiling also, including painting, and all for uh, to avoid or to prevent the cross contamination and how the plant should be designed and construction material what kind of uh, construction materials uh, to be used so those things and including where should be the production area weighing area quality control area ancillary area and so on okay so then today we look into in continuation of that the same chapter that uh, uh, chapter two in quality control and quality assurance. So let me continue the other parts of this uh, topics of this uh, that is uh, plant layout. It is a plant layout. It should be a, a coordinated effort uh, to achieve the uh, final objective uh, to integrate the machines, uh, materials, and uh, the personals for economic product. So the, that's why the plant layouts involves the location of different different departments and arrangement of machinery, machinery in each department. That means there there are production areas different. That is the one department. Quality control is one department. Quality assurance one department. Packaging area is one department. And for each and every department, the, even the machinery which is uh, required for those things also should be. And different and it should be uh, uh, present it should be installed in each department okay then a proper plant layout is required for ease of operation for the workers and also to have a good production controls even supervision and uh, reducing the labor costs not only labor costs, even the other production costs as well as the capital investment. So in such a way that the plant layout is to be designed. And it should be easy for the operation for any workers and also even for production control supervision. And even we can reduce the labor costs, even other, other production costs also, and even capital investment. Now by having a good layout, the potential problems, whatever is there, could be analyzed very rapidly. That means in a very in a very drastic way, uh, very speedy way, and an alternate solution could be. So in such a way, uh, we have to uh, make the uh, industry, a uh, pharmaceutical industry, way out. <coughs> so the different types of plant layouts. What are the different types of plant layouts? There are two different types of the plant layouts. One is the Process layout or functional layout, and another one is the straight line layout or product layout. Okay, those are the two prime areas for the plant layouts. So let us look into the, the first one, the process layout or the functional layout. The arrangement of machines of a particular type uh, doing a similar type of work or process as a separate department. So for example, all packing machines which can be placed in one department. Yeah, that means the granulation department, packing department, capital department, so different, different. Okay. So the, that is the reason arrangement of machines of a particular type. Doing a similar type of work or process is a separate department. So what are the advantages if you do that like that? So the major advantages are the it will there may be a more effective supervision can be achieved, number one. And even we can divide the labor, that is division of labor or only the specialized work can be provided. That is one. And uh, disruption of production is less. That means the interference that this and all. And scope for expansion is too high. So the, 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 those are the major advantages. The what are the disadvantages? Very minimal. So may not be suitable when number of unit operation should be performed in a sequential manner. In such cases, they are not. 
advisable. Then second one, if you look into the second one, the product or the straight line uh, layout. The product layout, it is the arrangement of machines uh, do, doing various operations in a line as one department. Means you can put or arrange the too many machines, okay, for different different operations. So in one line, okay. So that uh, uh, that will be as a one department. That is nothing but the, uh, the straight line layout or the product layout. Okay. So for example, in the manufacture of tablets, for example, the different unit operations. What are the different operations like dispensing, powder should be blending, and granulation should be done after granulation drying, then dry blending, compression, and coating. So they are all logically arranged in a series. Okay. Where in the tablet department. Okay. So liquid borrows or even the parental department. So different different departments will be there. So that's how we have to arrange the machines for various operations in a one line that we treat line as one department. Then for these advantages. So the major advantage is <clears throat> processing of work is very quick and smooth. Okay, then cost of material handling can be reduced using conveyors. Okay. The manufacturing cycle time is uh, reduced. That means the floor space can be properly utilized. Then inventory of work in progress is reduced. Then inventory of finished goods is less. Sometimes a combination of these two layouts is also used many times. Okay, both straight line and uh, production. Okay. So what are the major factors which influence the layout? The major factors influencing the layout. The number one, the type and quantity of products to be produced. So that's the one. And the type of process and controls which are required. The new site development or additions to previously developed sites. Space available and the space required. And operational convenience, convenience, convenience and the accessibility and economic distribution of utilities and then the type of building and uh, the building code requirement schedule M, as per schedule M. that's the requirement the health and safety considerations waste disposal problems and the auxiliary de equipment that means Auxiliary equipment is nothing but the steam generators, even gas lines, etc. They are all nothing but the auxiliary and possible future expansion they have to keep in mind. So even buildings, health and safety considerations, very, very important, waste disposal and auxiliary. So this is the one brief one, the figure, that means the figure, the layout figure, the stores layout exclusively for the stores, raw material warehouse. Okay. So then so how to enter there so from the gate receiving gate okay then wash it uh, it goes to the wash department that means quarantine area do, uh, do, soon after they enter it goes to quarantine um, sorting and checking inspection they will do okay so then the that goes to the to office but to storing materials then again dispensing after approval the storing materials then uh, it can be issued. Okay, sp special storage uh, precautions should be taken. Then uh, from there it goes to production. Then the after production it goes to the finished product. Uh, and it goes to the dispensing gate. How the stores layout will function. Then aseptic area. What exactly is an aseptic area and which diagram? The effect aseptic area diagram has been given. Uh, there should be an <coughs> septic room should be 140 uh, by 5 mm. That means horizontal, vertical, LF. Then those specifications are given the preparation area and uh, ceiling roof. So many things are there. And uh, there are some denotions are there, the A, B, C, D. No, as per that, you can E, F, G, okay. 
So A stands for catch, so stop over barrier, weaving speech channel, and G is grow, gown rack, and uh, is the approximate air changes per hour. And then air pressure in the water, about water pressure, and then LF is laminar flow, and D is water still. Then uh, the F is vertical chromium barrier tube, and wash basin G. So that's the, the, few, the very simplest diagram of this area. Then the, then the production, tablet production area, how it should be. That means the center storage as well as the perimeter production. Okay. Then uh, first, there should be a receiving area. This is the receiving area. From here, it goes to quarantine, receiving quarantine. Then it goes to uh, in process, you see, checkups. Then it's all goes like this approved bulk materials, packing area, the label room operation, shipping area, administrative office, uh, approved material, warehousing in process, tablet compression, tablet coating, then tablet and foundation. This is a very small the production area tablet. Then coating, compression, granulation, approved material, then the administrative offices, label room operation, then <coughs> the shipping area, exit. And that is one type and another one type that is straight line type. Straight line type is nothing but the already I told you that all machines arrangements can be done in one line. That is one. Then straight line type. Uh, again, we can have the uh, receiving area. Then again, uh, it goes to receiving quarantine. So all the aromas that have been shown, how it uh, enters there liquids, creams, ointments, manufacturing, brewery, then uh, from there it goes to dispensing, then goes to granulation, then from granulation, uh, uh, then uh, compression, granulation, compression, then it goes to and one is coating, another one goes to compression, then label room and operation and then packaging area, after the shipping area. A huge straight line type, and uh, some of the summary of the basic uh, factors, uh, considerations for design structure and you know, the layout summary. So, what could be the summary of the basic factors? Any layout. So, that is one is the location, another one is the structure, and third one is in terms of space finishes, size, scale, and the complexity. Manufacturing operations. Okay. Then production protection. How do we protect? Protect from whom when from weather, from pests, even dust, dust, etc. Then security should be there. And uh, space are sufficient for orderly manufacture and storage and to avoid the congestion and showers. An internal layout. So internal layout is as good, nothing but the smooth work flaws. So they are that are uh, directional, with the minimum of crossing over and uh, with the minimum of background backdrop, not reduce the potential for contamination and mix-ups. Then segregation of different types of operations and products. A grouping of together of similar operations and productions. Then lighting, heating, ventilation, installation of services and uh, fittings, drainage and drains and waste disposal, building maintenance. Those are the few things out there in the Some of the basic factors can be considered for design and structure. Also, layouts. 
summary of the then again structure design and layouts internal layout same again smooth floor flow that are attractional and maintenance any building which are used in the manufacturing area or processing or packing or holding of a truck product should be maintained in a good state of repair so the you take any pharmaceutical industry which is used in the manufacturing area or processing area or packing or holding a truck product so that shall be well maintained uh, in a good state of repair okay. then uh, deterioration of the buildings not only presents a poor image of the facility and it can also impact on uh, a product quality also and then cracks and holes holes in the walls floors ceilings can provide access for insects definitely not be any holes or walls uh, in between ceilings so they are all uh, they can provide the accessibility for insects rodents birds that are even microorganisms also they can also hind hinder the cleaning and the sanitation thereby increasing the potential for cross contamination or microbial ultimately then uh, floor cracks can also become uh, a safety hazard for people or even dislodged materials from the trucks floor cracking okay that is uh, any they, they should be have some safety hazards okay whenever they are dumping the products or raw materials from the trucks okay, there should not be any floor cracks then fall of water from the roof leaks in case if there is any leakage water from the uh, roof then uh, it can cause definitely a significant damage to the materials as well as uh, the equipment and gives rise to electrical failures and fires and results in damage to the basic structure of the building then holes if at all if there is any holes on the roof or near the top of the building So definitely provide the ready access to birds. There is any up in the place to nest with the building. They will make the nest. And damage to insulation or the pipes, ducts, and duct work. So definitely, even damage if there is any any damage to the insulation or even pipes or even duct. work so may result in leakage of pipes and in the shedding of the installation material in the product as well as the equipment then the light fittings usually so need regular cleaning to remove when any accumulated dust it can act both as potential source of contamination and reduce high light density okay that's one and then uh, uh, building inspection One is damage to the insulation or pipes. Another one is light fittings, and third one is the building inspection as well as the maintenance program. They have to be well defined in writing and keep a record on repairs, whatever the repair repairs have been performed. Then uh, essential services like heating, ventilation, air conditioning, okay, HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. uh water all types steam vacuum compressed air other gases electricity dust extraction product or material drive lines drainage and sprinkler uh, system must undergo in mm. maintenance routine maintenance sorry unbalanced air systems or undesired uh, exhaust fans or problems with heat exchangers insufficient light levels pressure monitoring problems condenser problems faulty electrical systems improper lamp flow for hoods flood water supply etc they are all commonly faced problems 
so that can be easily overcome by proper maintenance okay so examples of improper maintenance some of the examples we can see the improper maintenance the sterility test room was not designed and constructed to facilitate cleaning and the disinfection and uh, the heat ventilation and vac and uh, dust collection systems are not validated the direction of the airflow is not monitored in the manufacturing rooms and there are no approved procedures for maintaining the hvac and the dust control system throughout the plant and then the yeah, yeah, wi-fi system is not designed in a matter uh, to minimize the microbial contamination uh the wi-fi system is not designed uh, designed in a manner to minimize microbial contamination and endotoxin load and the return procedures covering pest control within the buildings are not signed or dated in case by the persons who are prepared and authorized them there are no temperature or humidity specifications for the area and the sensors for monitoring warehouse temperature have not been calculated since their installation Three years ago, so air circle recirculated in the compressing area has never been tested for what for particulate matter, and even the validation of the air handling system is uh, inadequate. Okay, that's one area, and uh, then sanitation. We we'll look into the sanitation in brief. The building used in the manufacture processing buildings are used in the manufacturing, clothing, packing, or holding of a drug product shall be maintained in a clean and sanitary condition. Always, the building shall be free of infestation by the rodents, birds, insects, and other vermin other than directed animals. Then, trash and organic waste matter shall be held and disposed in a timely and sanitary manner. There shall be a written procedure assigning responsibility for sanitation and scrubbing insufficient, scrubbing in sufficient detail, the cleaning. And also, there shall be a written procedure for use of suitable rodent sites, insecticides, fungicides, mitigating agents, and cleaning and sanitizing agents. The sanitation procedure shall apply to work performed by contractors or temporary employees as well as. Uh, work performed by full time employees during the ordinary course of operation. And also, there, and even cleaning procedures should be written in sufficient detail with respect to the materials, uh, equipment cleaning, equipment uh, process, and product. Frequently, the frequency that uh, they are unambiguous. In addition to the cleaning of floors, walls, and ceilings. Uh, there should be attention even for dust extra extraction as well as the air input systems also. And then cleaning procedure should be written in a sufficient detail with respect to the uh, materials, equipment process, uh, frequency that they are in Americas. And the spilled materials, whatever is there such as sugar that might attract pages should immediately to be eliminated. Halls in buildings and that could provide additional means of accessibility should be blocked. So these are the few things which uh, can do that. And next class we'll see the other things, even including the uh, references. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, please get back to me.